Our Visa Race Summary at 95 laps, seven leaders, nine lead changes. Jeff Gordon has locked up the five bonus points for leading the most laps. Still 32 cars on the lead lap. That has to be a near record. Four caution flags for 13 laps. And I'll tell you what else is impressive. We're this deep into this race, 95 laps. Jeremy Mayfield just carried his car behind the wall. That's only four cars out of 43 on a road course. Jeremy Mayfield, Casey Atwood, Brian Simo, and Kevin LePage that's out of the race. Looks like the 29 car's in, and if that inspector is doing what I think he's doing, he's going to be holding him right there. Too fast entering the pits, Darrell, 15-second penalty. It's not a good sign when you look up and see one of those guys standing in front of your car. These guys were really not having a banner day. They was 23rd before this pit stop. And again, he was in the top 10 in points. He's going to take a hit in the points today. It's going to fall a lap down right here. As Robbie Gordon comes around at turn 11. Yeah, he might get out just in, just probably in front of Robbie, just enough to worry him to death. Yeah. Yes. Just what, oh. I, just what I was afraid of. It's not what Robbie Gordon needs right no, now. No, it's not. And of course, you know, Harvey's got fresh tires. He's going to get around him, but it's going to cost uh, Robbie a lot of time. And Harvey is a little hot. He got held for speed. Uh, it'd probably be a good time to just let that young man go. Now, how about Jeff Gordon? He's got to feel Harvick is holding him up. Oh, yeah. Harvick, uh, and then Harvick's on fresh tires. He ought to be able to drive by these guys. And he's won a race here, a Winston West race, so he's no stranger to this racetrack. You heard Robbie, uh, Robbie Gordon say, what was that all about? He doesn't know what uh, what Harvick's up to. Of course, Harvick's oh, lost no. the lap. He's trying to stay on the lead lap. All clear. Boy, I'd be making me a deal right now, oh. DW. I, I would be letting him. Of course, the problem he's got is if he uh, lets him go by, he sure doesn't want to leave enough room for Jeff Gordon to go by. Right. If it, where, depending on where he let him go by, if he opens the door, Jeff Gordon's going to be there with Kevin Harvey. Surprised that uh, Harvick with the fresher tires couldn't make the move. Stewart inside Gordon. He's got him. Second place. He's got him. And the fans go wild. Now it would be a good time for Robbie to get that 29 car out behind him. But he got to be careful on, on second thought. He don't want to get him in front of him and let him hold him up. So it's kind of between a rock and a hard place. He had a good chance there at turn two to stay left and let Harvick through and chose not to. But if he gets Harvick in front of him and then Harvick can't go. Right. Here's the replay again. Gordon locked a brake up and Stewart got underneath him. Tony Stewart even got his car a little bit loose by heavy braking. He was able to maintain the bottom of the racetrack and complete the pass off the corner. That's both guys racing down in there real hard trying to keep the position. Now let him go right here, Robbie. Let him go. No. Nope. Look at passenger side. Passenger side. Clear. Robbie, you need to let him go, buddy. Or he'll harass you to or, death. Or you're going to have problems. That's fresher tires, Robbie. He is a lap down with fresher tires. All clear. And I see that Robbie doesn't need this. Down. Come on, Tom, kick back a little. He doesn't need to worry about that car. Just drive your car. He gets up there and where he can, let him make the pass because he's going to make it. He's got fresher tires. He has to be able to. Turn 11, if Harvick doesn't overdrive it, that's his best shot right here coming down into 11. And what it's making Robbie Gordon do is overdrive his race car that's using his tires up even more. Yeah, he just needs it. Boy, I know how he feels. I mean, you don't want to let that guy get in front of you and hold you up, but you don't want him banging around on your back bumper either. And then also, if Robbie Gordon's car's been a little bit tight with someone in front of him taking that front down force away, you don't need him in front of him for that reason. And right now, there's enough distance between Kevin Harvick and the car behind him that, Kevin, stay behind Robbie. Don't dog you got enough room, he'll let you have your lap back. And here will be the spot coming down into turn four. This has been a good passing opportunity. Nope. Harvick stays lined up right with Gordon. Not going to try him this time. Boy, Gordon's car, Robbie's, is just so fast. But Darrell, even with being that fast, you've got a good race car. You're busy in there. Even Dale Jarrett said, even on the straightaway, you never stop. And it's got to be aggravating with that car right up behind you. Boy, it's, such a, it's just a big distraction. That's all it is. It'll cause you to miss your mark. You'll run off the track. Let's go back to the ninth place battle where Jeff Burton has gotten around Bill Elliott. That's Robbie Gordon saying, if he quits pressuring me, I'll give him his lap back. Now there's Jeff Burton and Bill Elliott. Uh, Jeff Burton in 99, he, he has had a good run today. Started in 26 in seven races here. He's only had one top 10. This is a good run for him today.
Down into turn 11 with Ron Fellows and John Andretti behind them. Elliott will look outside. As the leaders climb the hill, and again, Harvick is just all over Robbie Gordon. All over, I mean all over him. He needs it, I'm, I'm telling you, I, if I was a spotter, I'd be saying, let him go. He's gonna cause him to run off the racetrack. He's got pressure tires, Rob. He's got pressure tires. Now. See, now I think he's waited too late to let him go. Yep. He had some distance while ago. He could have let it happen and still fell back in behind, but Tony Stewart has caught this group. That is Jim Long going I wouldn't be walking. If I was Jim Long, I would not be walking. I'd be running. I'd be running down there saying, hey, come on, man. We got a shot at winning this race. Cut us some slack. That's Richard Childress up on the box who owns Harvick's car. Okay, I'll, I'll handle it. Don't worry. Just uh, one more minute. One, one, just wait a minute. Jim Long, he's been around the sport for a number of years. He was part of that Bobby Allison championship team when Bobby drove for Die Guard back in the early 80s. Just an excellent crew chief. He was Jeff Bodine's crew chief on the 60 car before that team folded up. They had some great runs and none like today, though. 12 laps to go. Harvick pounding Robbie Gordon to try and get back on the lead lap. Now they got good distance on Tony Stewart. Up here on the top of the hill, he should go wide and let Harvick go by. It won't hurt him. Get him out from behind him. Also won't happen. Let him go right here. Let him go right here. Right here. Let him go. When they get distance, they can pull away from Tony Stewart. When they here. start racing, they, Tony Stewart closes back up to him. But down here where the, where the tires are more important, the cars are getting the, needing the grip, Harvey can close up. Turn four, then a straight squirt across to turn seven. Woo. But Gordon Bobby left Gordon. the door open. He's, he's overdriving his race car right now, Daryl. I'm not sure. I, I, I just don't think this would be my strategy right at this point. You can see he's still plenty fast. He can pull away a little bit, and particularly up through these S's. Really accelerates great right there. Darryl, the, Robbie must sense that his car is not great with another car right in front of him, and that must be why he's so afraid to let Harvey Well, I, I think what he's afraid of, if he gets it, obviously he can hold him off. If he lets him in front of me, what if he holds me up, then I got... Tony Stewart riding my back bumper. Boy, look at the run going in turn 11. Tony Stewart got in the car, stuck right at the bottom of the racetrack. Pulled right up to him, but they accelerate off the corner, pull him away just a little bit. And you know who's liking this? Jeff Gordon and Ricky Rudd, because Ricky the Rudd more is... this goes on, the more those two cars right there can close right up. Ricky Rudd will be all over the back of Jeff Gordon here, and uh, I think he can make the pass. Jeff seems to not be at his best right now, Jeff Gordon. Trouble for Ron Fellows, the left front on Fellows' car. And can he get that car off the racetrack and out of harm's way? Just stop on the racetrack. He's trying to bring it along. And he does. He gets it away just past Gilligan's Island. Let's see what happened here to Fellows battling Bill Elliott. Just gets out wide right here. They hang together right yep. there. Oh. And you know what, guys? I'm not sure. A caution would not be. Caution's out. Stewart, get past Gordon. Here they come, they're running to the caution. They're racing back to the caution flag. Well, that, that, that lap car of uh, Harvick, I mean, I, I, I can't fault the, the kid, don't get me wrong. Let the 29 have his lap back. Let the 29 have his lap back. We worked the deal. Let the 29 have his lap back. So come on, Ross Harvick. Now, can he get past Stewart before the start finish line? I'm not sure. Because Stewart's got Robbie Gordon, it'll be racing yeah, no, over the he, caution as well. Stewart wants the 29 car there. He had a deal with a seven. But He's he slowing it. up. There oh, he goes. He's going to let him go to the start finish line, let him have his lap back. I tell you, that was a tough call. Robbie Gordon has got to be just seething inside oh, that race is. car. Oh, he is. When, when Harvick came out of the pits, he had four fresh tires, we'll I, I saw right away he was going to be right He's in the way. There's got to be tires left, guys. I have no rear tires. Owner Jim Smith, crew chief Jim Long. And you heard Robbie Gordon still talk about it. Still faster than Stewart. Still faster than Stewart. We've watched now. him be loose all day. Now, this is Kevin Harvick in the 29, turn, turn seven. To turn seven. Turn four to turn seven. Harvick's there. Oh. Beating and banging, Stewart saw it happening. And Tony, Into the S's. Stewart you, had you the see, momentum. The, you see, th this is just what drives me crazy. Robbie Gordon is worried about a lap car, and he lets Tony Stewart take the lead. 
Now let's show you. So Pontiac Ford Chevy the front three with three laps to go again. Gordon catches Stewart at turn four runs wide. Gordon ran way wide coming out of turn four. That cost him a bit but he's right all over Stewart again at turn seven. Getting in the corner right there. But Tony he just can't just quite can't get the power down. He's got great brakes. He's doing everything right. He just can't get the power down. He spins the rear tires a little too much. The biggest problem Robbie Gordon has is the finish line is located coming out of turn 11. Yeah, it's not going in a corner. Nope. I think Tony Stewart is pretty well watching his mirror, keeping that little gap between him and Robbie and hitting those marks. Got to hit those marks. That's what it's all about. All you got to do is drive in that corner there just a little too hard, open up the bottom. And guess what would happen? Gordon got off turn 11 a little better that time, but still not quite as well as Tony Stewart. Going to have to get off better than that if he's going to pass it. Two laps to go. Right now, this is who, this is if somebody makes a mistake or not. But you know, in our finishes here, we have seen a lot of things happen on that last lap. <laughs> no kidding. Burton and Bobby Labonte there continue to battle. Right behind them, here's Jeff Burton in the 99. Bill Elliott in the 9. Mark Martin, 11th, John Andretti, Terry Labonte, Scott Pruitt, and Boris Set, two road racers in the top 15. <laughs> Boris Set has worked hard to get back into the top 15. Get it, turn seven. Gordon is so close. He just can't get off the corner, can't put that throttle down and stay in it. Couple of ex-open wheelers, three of them in fact, battling in the first three spots. And Ricky Rudd right there on their back bumper. Rusty Wallace not too far behind. Rudd I think is gonna consider this a victory as Kyle Petty spins and gets back on track. That's too bad, he was up to 25th place and you know, we haven't said a lot about him, but he's hung in there all day. Gordon. Oh, Gordon goes wide down there, he goes real wide. Or uh, uh, Stewart, I'm sorry. Gordon closed, but not enough. But he's still accelerating, beating hey, bad off that corner. Last lap. Boy, Stewart went way wide down there, but so did Robbie. Oh, a big pile up, and Johnny Benson and Dale Jarrett go around at turn 11. And Dale Jarrett had worked his way back up to 17th after overcoming that earlier spin down in that same corner. Here we are on the final lap. Let's see if we got anything left here, guys. Tony Stewart keeps her on the track. Tony picked up a lot of margin there. Dale Jarrett still stalled at turn 11. Now he finally gets going. Well, this is one place. And Terry Labonte has spun. It, Labonte. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. We're on the white flag lap. I'm sure the spotters will be telling him and telling these guys. Yeah. Terry Labonte sitting right where those cars come off turn 11. But they come to the flag no matter what on the last lap. Last lap, you race back. The caution is out, but they race to the checkered flag and the caution. Stewart by six car lengths. It's going to be interesting. Watch Robbie Gordon going down in his turn 11. This is a time you might as well go in and drive her down in there, Robbie. See what you got, buddy. Oh, he's too far back, Larry. Unless oh, Tony lines it up and slides out of the groove. Uh, they know about Terry Labonte's car here. Tony Stewart. Look at Robbie. He's got her smoking sideways back there. Off the corner, and Stewart will get his 11th career Winston Cup victory. He wins on a road course and only his fifth road course start. There's Ward Burton coming across after a great day. Bobby Labonte, Jeff Burton, Bill Elliott, the top 10. Robbie Gordon pulls alongside Tony. Offers congratulations. Jeff Gordon pulls up and they give each other a wave. Not a, not a lot of congratulations. Oh, just come a little on, bit. DW. <laughs> It's a man I wanted that so badly. I know that Robbie could have tasted that one. That race had more twists and turns than the road from here to Healdsville. My gosh. And it is Tony Stewart who will take a Pontiac to victory lane on a road course for the first time since 1982. We'll be right back. Out and meet uh, the second place finisher, Dick Bergeron. And I'm with Robbie Gordon. Robbie, tell us what happened between you, the 29, and the 20 car. Ah, uh, you know, unfortunately, I guess Harvick was trying to make his lap up, and you know, probably wasn't the right time. You know, that late in the race with with the, the 20 and me racing so hard, uh, he he tapped into me, got me sideways. 20 got by both of us. You know, it's racing. Uh, what comes around goes around. You did a nice job, to Matt. Well, Jeff Gordon finishes third, takes a drink of water. 
you had a dominant car early on. What happened, Jeff? Well, just lost track position. I made a couple mistakes out there. Um, getting into 11 when the tires got old, back in we just, you know, tires would just get loose a little bit. And if you came in there too hot, you know, I wheel hopped and I lost the lead and I lost second doing that. But uh, it looked like Tony really at the end there had the best car anyway. He was coming and, you know, he was real strong here last year. So, uh, you know, congratulations those to those guys. But had we gone green with my pit crew and this total team effort, uh, we might have had something for him, but that just wasn't the case today. And, you know, all good streaks got to come to an end eventually, but I'm just so proud of these guys in the DuPont Chevrolet. You know, I want to uh, just thank God for a great day and, and uh, Quaker State, Pepsi, GMAC, Fritos, uh, everybody on board here. Uh, we're, we're real proud of this effort, and it was a good point today for us. Another top three finish for Jeff Gordon. Mike? Tony Stewart goes to our MBNA winner's circle. Fifth road course start, first win on a right and left turn race. Steve Burns is there. And Tony Stewart taking off the seatbelt, Mike Joy. As you said, his 11th career win, first on a road course. Tony, tell us how you won that race. <laughs> uh, the guys in the orange uniforms behind you. You know, we, uh, we were decent at the beginning, and then the second run, we weren't as good. And, uh, you know, in the last stop, Greg and the guys made a great change. I mean, we tried something the second stop that didn't work. And, you know, that last stop, they made some changes that uh, really made this car come to life and, uh, you know, put us as quick as the 7 and the 24 were. Tony, did you feel before the race that you guys would be a factor for the win? Well, I knew we'd have a shot at it. It was just a matter of, uh, you know, whether we could be good all day. I mean, I've always had such bad luck with a flat tire and getting sick last two years. So uh, I just wanted to get to the end of this one. <laughs> all right, we'll let you get out and celebrate. <laughs> yeah. Tony Stewart, Greg Zipidelli, Joe Gibbs Racing, a road course winner. Not bad for a fellow who started his career on small ovals, worked up the bigger one. Sweet, baby. Saved him up.